Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. We got Ardbeg, 10 year. Right up my alley. And you shouldn't delete emails if you're a political figure. Don't do it. Look shady. Let's do this. Do it. Let's test it. Test it. All right, Bruno, Ardbeg 10, we're in the land that I'm comfortable with now, That's baby. Right. Smokies. Ardbeg is smoky. It comes from the Ale. Yes. Bingo. As we used to say originally, Isle. Isle la la. Isle la la. It's Ile, and I've actually heard I la. Really? I haven't heard that. I always hear Ile. 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 The Ile. They got a little dog here, a little Jack Russell Terrier. Just throwing that out. But before we get, let's forget, let's talk about emails. Love the emails. All right, here's the deal. You love them? I love emails. Yeah, I don't mind. I think it's a great way to communicate. Mm -hmm. However, there's, there's pluses and minuses. I dig them. However, if you're a political figure who's been in the news recently <laughs> and you decided you were going to do your on duty State Department emails on your personal email, somehow, account, well, somehow this person had their own email his or her email server at their house, and it was a, a private setup. It was for her, his or her, his or her uh, government emails, right. but it's somehow set up at their house, and then they're allowed to just get Whatever. rid of it. Right. Well, worse than that, this is the part I didn't like. You go get your three staffers, and they decide what is actually government and what's personal, and they delete permanently delete those that they think are not relevant. Mm -hmm. That is shady because, <laughs> okay, something was deleted. Hey, well, guess what? This one that was deleted actually had to do with campaign finance or whatever. And you go, I didn't know the staffer did it. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. That just kills me, man. But I mean, who else? I want to know who else is allowed to keep their email server at home. Well, yeah, especially when you're is dealing that, with state secrets. Is that a common practice? Can't be. And if it is, you'd think, like, the IT guy had to be going nuts over that. You know, we, had, we had a guy at our work that <laughs> got in trouble because he was forwarding his e his work emails to his personal email address, and he got right. in trouble. Yes. Got counseled. Right. And I'm just telling you, there's IT guys out there that are like, I mean, that, that like, breaks so many rules for the IT people. And then if you're talking secret stuff government secret stuff I just yeah. can't even imagine it the whole thing I mean people go oh it's emails come on man the emails at my work wouldn't allow that I yeah. mean my goodness. and it's it's if you're not experienced in it to me it's pretty easy to keep work emails and personal emails separate yeah well you just have a whole separate email account yeah matter of fact I'm gonna tell you right off the bat I don't want work emails coming to my personal email account no, I, I don't I, I'm in work mode when I go through, and it's like drudgery. I mean, I'm yeah. like, oh my god, I got eight. Well, that's why I frowned when emails. you said emails were good. Oh. I'm thinking like work. Emails. Work emails aren't good, but like if I get something from Herman, Herman sends me an email from Canada mocking me on my pronunciation of Amrut, <laughs> not my pronunciation. He was, he was yelling at you. Yes, because and, and this is a shout out to Herman. Herman said Amrut means nectar nectar from and we're talking en route mm. the whiskey from india he says it means nectar within a month i remembered him saying passion yeah. <laughs> okay and i'm you usually said. known for my lock solid memory you are however i can remember when i was three and my mom came into the crib I came in and looked at me i remember that like it was yesterday but i can't remember that herman yeah. Said nectar. Nectar. That's the translation for on root. On root, not and, passion. And then on video, I say passion. You just bring, he just throws it in it too. On root means passion. passion. And Herman said it. And he's like, no, no, no. Well, see, he didn't even email us though. That was like a. Yeah, topic. but if, but if Herman emailed me and said, hey. Yeah. I've got this new whiskey. You're going to dig it. I'm like, yeah. It's like opening a treasure. My personal emails, I love them. 
I got people. Oh, sure. People sending me board games to review. People talking about scotch. I love emails. I, I don't like snail mail. I knew you'd work board games in. Yeah, I work board games in. Some of them are in the background. Let's go. If you ever want to try a board game, get one. Hold on. All right. I smell the smoke already, and I haven't Arden, even raised well, it to my nose. Why? Why is our bag of tin here? Because it's so darn strong, they can't keep it for twelve, baby. It's bursting out of cask. A, a lot of your peated scotches are younger. Um, your heavily peated scotches are younger in age. Oh, even because they even does a tenure that's uh, uh, yeah, but, well, yeah, a little bit of peat there, but um, mm -hmm. generally the peat um, is going to be so strong that they can they can pump it out of the cask and get it out there a little bit quicker. They're not developing as much as the flavors. No, the peat is yeah, there; they get it. I think you're giving my favorite type of scotch short shrift. They yeah. pump it out. Yeah. No, they don't. They gently yeah. massage it out. Of well, them. I'm just saying. Look they at a lot of your the heavily, barrel. a lot of your heavily peated scotches are ten years or maybe even younger. I know, but I'm just saying. You're like they pump it out. They, I'm saying they pop the barrel and they let gold magic. I just would say. Flow I would say they have to pump it out because they're popular. <laughs> I know, I'm heated, just saying. Heated scotches are popular. If I were to talk about a good smoky art bag, I would say when they get it out of the cast, they let it gently flow like a golden stream into the bottle. They're capturing magic. They're not pumping it out. Now, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. This, I, we're in the land of brunching. Yes. Here, okay. I like, I love the smoke. I like the other scotches too. Heck, I like all whiskeys. But when I think scotch, I'm thinking peat. And I kind of relish the fact that some people smell peat and they run away screaming. Yes. And I don't even smoke cigars. You do. I do. Yeah. I thought you now, would dig the smoke. I I don't dig heavily peated scotches. I do like just a very slight peat, maybe up to a medium peat, but heavily peated is not my favorite. And I'm... I can smell this. And now the thing is, though, I will recognize a good. Still, it's still a good scotch. Yeah, yeah. I'll still give it a good score, but it's just not my. I'm with you. Forte. Yeah, I'll mock you on that. I'm just saying. Yeah. I, I think your verbiage was harsh with pump it out. Now, what's the uh, the Brook Lottie does their Octmore? Octomore. I want. I've heard of it. I want it. It's supposedly the he most is. heavily peated right. scotch ever made, based on parts per, per million ppm's. Yes. Boom. You just said PPM. All right, right on the nose, I get the heavily peated, but a nice, complex, slight citrus. Mm -hmm. Bringing the citrus out of that heavy peat is magic in and of itself. Love it. I do agree. I get, you immediately get the peat smoke. Um, I do, even me, still get a, there is a very slight citrus in here that mm -hmm. I get. And I get some of the grassiness or the maltiness as well mm -hmm. with it. God, I love this. I'm telling you. On the taste, neat. I get, I get that strong peaty smoke taste, but it almost also gives me a hint of like mesquite wood, and I, I leave, I love it. It leaves clean. It's there. It's bold. It's in your face, and then just slips away. You can't grab it. You can't hold on to it. It just drops off and fades. Now, I will tell you, on that taste right there, neat, I got it, it was almost like a burnt grass. <laughs> it, okay. I mean, not bad. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, I know now, what you're It was almost like I was mowing the yard and the grass caught on fire and flew in my mouth. All right, they do do field burning around here with the farms, and I definitely, you know, when they're burning the field, I will admit to you, it does remind me on occasion of like the an mm -hmm. bed peaty smoke. So I, I agree with you on that. A little hint of water to it doesn't change it much for me. Maybe I get a little bit more of a sweetness out of there rather than a uh, citrus. I do have there. There is a little bit of spiciness to it. Um, I still smell the sweetness. However, I don't really get it in the taste. Hmm. It's still there. I can almost smell a little bit of the sweetness, the citrus coming through. But I can't when I'm when I'm tasting it. I can't tell you what it is or that it's still there. Very dry mouth feel. Love it. It's a dry mouth feel um, that, that for some reason I get a little bit of numbness in the cheek and it's not even a real high ABV, I don't think. 46%. Right. All right. That's up there. But I mean, I get that, but it's real dry. And then 
And then I get a very nice malty, oaky aftertaste. So, but it's that first, boom, that first explosion that I really crave with this. Now, I would say this is heavily peated. Would you say this is heavily peated? I love the peat. Um, sure. Yeah. Even I mean, but where I'm going is even though I, I classify this as a heavily peated scotch, I have that it's a pleasant peatiness and that my, even my taste buds got more of a massage from it than an assault. I'm, I'm loving the massage. Yeah. Now you're talking the language of our beck. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. It, it's, well, not, it's not really it's not a, a pumping massage. It's not a punch in the mouth smoke that, that an offends air, you an air punch. and is overpowering. It's still, even though it's a heavy scotch, it's very pleasant. It's, yes. It's, yeah. Yeah, this is, if I good. break this out with someone that hasn't had scotch before, they run away screaming. So what I do is I start him with something gentle, like a, a Dalwini. And, and then I bring him maybe up to a Crag and more. And then if I introduce a Smoky, it'll be this, or it'll be a Lefroig. And when I do the Lefroig with someone new, I usually do the quarter cast. Yeah. I like, no, the quarter cast, not the cast strength. Either one. Cast. Yeah, well, cast strength's even heavier. I love the, but but we're on this. Yeah. But I will take them so they realize, oh, They're, there's this and there's this and there's this. Mm -hmm. And even then when I get them here, sometimes they really appreciate it and go, wow. I mean, it's like you've given me three different drinks, but they're all, but now they know they're all scotch. And then they get the complexities and the differences. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I've done that with family members as well and started with a light with a light citrusy yeah. um, scotch, say maybe a Glen Livid or a Glen Fittick, and then moved to, I've given them a, went to a sherry cask, mm. something to show mm -hmm. off. And most of my family members have liked the sherry cask scotch, and then I moved into the Ardbeg with them, which they, most of them haven't liked. Mm -hmm. um, but like I say, for a heavily peated Islay um, scotch, even for me that does, that I don't like, don't prefer. Did you hurt yourself there? Scotches. It was like, no, so, it, it, it's good. I love it. So I love it. Um, I, I will admit to you, I want, uh, I do want to really shock myself with some more peat. So um, 89 is the malt mark. For, no, 90. Sorry, my notes are 90 on this. Yeah, this breaks into the 90. Let me double check because I was thinking, yep, 90 is my malt mark on this. It's, it, you know, it's. If it had some sherry punching through with it, if it had a little bit more of the citrus punching through, I might mark it up to a 90. Hmm. 88 is good for me. Okay. Like I say, I'm still, and it's a good scotch. Right up my alley. Um, I'm surprised you gave it an 88. I yeah. thought you were going to throw an 85. Well, that's why I say I can still recognize a good scotch, yeah. even though I don't prefer it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. yeah, smoke it. Smoke, baby. Bring me some smoke. Mm -hmm. Just don't delete the email. Yeah. God, that looks shady. You talk about smoky, shady backroom dealing. That's, There's drinking those those three those three like assistants are drinking hard bag and being like, "Delete. What about this one? It says something about top secret. That's personal. <laughs> Delete it." <laughs> Let me point out too. I just thought about because as I looked at my last drink in here, I lay scotches and peated scotches are generally a lot paler, right. and you can see it uh, with the hard bag. Um, because of the young maturation well, in the you know, oak casks, they don't pick up a lot of the wood, the coloring from the wood that right. they're in. And this tells me no caramel coloring. Yeah, definitely. Bingo. Yep. So, so you don't need it. Scotch it. Scotch gods. Dummies. Slauncha. <laughs> Dummies. Dummies.